So the Niners don't have many weaknesses right now, but they're going to have to get through the next four games at least with their third string left tackle, whoever that might be. It's looking like it's Jalen Moore for now. Um, he finished the game. Colton McKivitz sprained MCL just like Aziz Alshair and Elijah Mitchell. Could miss four, six, eight weeks. Guess we don't know. How dire is this? What have you seen from Jalen Moore? And do you think the Niners can win games, uh, plural, with him at left tackle? It's a huge question. I, I, you know, I saw when he first got into the lineup in the preseason, what, a year ago? Yeah. I saw a guy who looked like a plug and play, ready to roll offensive tackle. Now, he might not have elite feet for a left tackle spot, but I, to me, he seemed plenty good enough to play right tackle. Mm -hmm. But then it's like, since that point, we've seen clear regression. And when he played extensive snaps earlier this year, his feet looked so slow that he looked like overmatched by anybody with any movement ability at all. Like he was going to be a total liability in pass coverage. I just, or pass, uh, pass mm -hmm. protection. Mm -hmm. I, I just think that they have to test him a lot and really work on his feet and really work on his, on, you know, getting out of his stance um, and just moving his feet and get, doing whatever they can to try to help him uh, move his feet because you're still talking about prototypical size and strength, long arms. He's there's a lot to like about Jalen Moore as a tackle prospect, but he's had a couple reps that make you say, "Uh oh, that's that that guy's going to get your quarterback on put on the IR." So when he looks good, Grant, I think he looks capable of being an NFL starting right tackle who could, you know, maybe play half a game as a situational left tackle and be serviceable. But on the bad snaps, he looks like he's not NFL, doesn't, mm -hmm. should not be playing tackle, mm -hmm. might be mm -hmm. a guard. Yeah. Um, so somewhere in there is reality. He's probably not as good as the guy who looked like a plug and play starter in the preseason when he, when he started the entire preseason, I think, at, ta at tackle. Mm -hmm. But he's probably not quite as bad as the guy who was just looking like his feet were in cement mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago when he was getting some runs. So. They, he's got the talent. They got a great coach. Coach him up. Get him ready. I know it's yeah. easier said than done, but I don't think they're going to find a street free agent any better. Yeah, it seems like what they have to do. I mean, he's not great. I, I don't think he's particularly good, but he wasn't an issue last night. They didn't give up any sacks. So what the Niners have to do is basically keep playing like last night. Get, get an early out. lead. Get the ball out quick. Run the ball. Yeah. Because if they fall behind and you know they have to pass, he's in trouble. If they're in third and ten, he's in trouble. So yeah. they avoided all of that last night. And if they can continue to avoid that, they should be able to against Carolina, Atlanta, and the Rams. They've shown that they can do that against the Rams. Then great. Against Kansas City? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. They, they score a lot of points, and it, it's possible that he's going to be put in situations where his uh, lack of – well, Time. I'm a we'll little concerned, to be honest, about Carolina, too, because they got Brian Burns, and Brian Burns true. is a beast. He's really good. He's their left defensive end. He's really good. Uh, they've got Yatir Gross Matos, the big kid from Penn State. He's at the right defensive end spot. If you could match him up more with Gross Matos, I think you'd do better than Burns. As far yeah. as Atlanta, what's Atlanta's uh, – depth? what's their depth chart at defensive end? I haven't really checked them out too much this year as far as who they have yeah. off the edges, but it's – it's uh, Taquan Graham and uh, Okundeji, who you played okay. at, I think, West Virginia. Sorry, okay. Steelers. Okay. Yeah, so. I mean, not the greatest. Oh, he's they still have Grady Jarrett, but he's in the Dame. middle. Yeah. Yeah, they don't have – so Atlanta doesn't have the the big-time edge guys. Yeah. But Brian Burns is as good as it gets in this league. So I, I would And Kansas City has Frank England. Clark. And yeah, Frank Clark's really good. Yeah. So I would chip. I would chip the heck out of uh, Brian Burns this week. So Yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting. If the Niners do become like a Super Bowl contender, they're going to have to weather this part of the season. And they did this in 2019. If I remember correctly, there was a long stretch where both Joe Staley and Mike McGlinchey were out. And they won all the games with Justin School out there. So look, if Jalen Moore doesn't work out, they could try Daniel Brunskill, who isn't quite in football shape yet, but he will be soon. And if he doesn't work out, there's my favorite player on the team. I think he's in the practice squad, Jason Poe, who's probably 5'11". Is that too short to play left tackle? Yes. Is it? Yes. <laughs> it's just, but, I mean, yes. it's more of an arm length than anything because yeah. it's it's that – it's it's being able to lock out and then have – that was my concern with McKivitz is he, he's kind yeah. of a short arm guy. But, you know, um, 
Yeah. You know, at, at this point, I'll say this. I mean, they do have a, a really good O line coach, and if you can play call kind of around your weaknesses, that could help you. Um, I don't want to say Trent's overrated, but they can get away without Trent in the run game. I think where they're going to miss him is against the elite speed rushers. Yeah. But again, the Niners aren't really built to pass, aren't trying to pass, aren't pushing the ball down the field. Like if they had John Elway or Kurt Warner and they were really trying to push the ball down the field to Isaac Bruce, then yeah, you would freaking need Trent Williams. But for what the Niners do on offense, he's kind of wasted. It's like the ball's out in a second and a half and it's a five yard throw, but at least you have the best left tackle in football. Yeah. And he, and he, and he'll, he, you know, he's intimidating. He's good, obviously, you know, as a run blocker and a pass blocker, but you're right. If they were a vertical, if they were Tampa, yeah, yeah, Tampa, but Tampa, Brady with Tampa doesn't do what Brady did with New England. Brady with Tampa is down the field and he's 45. Well, if that's the case, then your left tackle is vital. But if you can get it out, play with some rhythm, run the ball, um, maybe you can get away with a for you know a few weeks in a, in a in a perverse way this could benefit the 49ers because right. you don't Jalen Moore needs he needs to play yeah to get better he needs yeah. reps to get better and if they're going to ever lean on him and he's on the roster if they're ever going to lean on him in a big situation then it might be advantageous to get him a few reps and why not do it in you know week 5 against Carolina when you're right. favored and week 6 against Atlanta when you're favored and yep. you know may, you know maybe this will benefit them you know late in the year when Trent comes back and you can see he goes out for a series but it's a big series late in the year maybe you can throw Jalen Moore in there and some of that experience will pay off 